The history of Alaskan aviation is full of the exploits of pioneering aviators. People like Eilson, Reeve, Ween, Peterson, men of vision who believed that the airplane was the only way to tame this vast wilderness, to tie together its far-flung communities. They proved their point and showed the way for another generation of pioneering flyers. Men like Bobby Scholten and Maury Carlson, whose dream it was to provide Alaskans with a reliable and safe way to ship to and from the bush. They acted on those dreams and through their determination and innovation, built what is Alaska's first and only all-cargo airline, Northern Air Cargo. Bobby Scholten and Maury Carlson were the perfect team. Bobby had a knack for business. Maury was a true student of aeronautics. Their experience as pilots for Wien and Alaska Airlines in the early 50s convinced them that flying air cargo in Alaska could be big business if they could find the right aircraft. Those aircraft happened to be right under Bobby's nose, as explained by Hugh Matheson, longtime friend of Northern Air Cargo, one of their first customers, and now an active member of the board of directors. Uh, he decided to bid on a C-82, the two C-82s that became surplus on Elmdorf Air Force Base. And he and Maury, both uh, at that time captains for Alaska, uh, put in a joint bid and indeed uh, got the aircraft and didn't know quite what they, what they had. But certainly Bob had a strong feeling that he could play an important part in uh, flying freight to the bush because it's, it's had the unusual configuration of uh, taking large cargo and uh, there was nothing comparable at all in the commercial aircraft line at that time. Bobby and Maury now own two C-82s, but no one in Alaska had ever operated one of these strange aircraft. So they taught themselves, studied the flight manuals, and flew by the book to Anchorage International Airport and began looking for business. The first flight of the boxcar was uh, <coughs> flying telephone poles to Dillingham for the uh, Dillingham REA. And the next flight the aircraft took uh, was flying a house trailer for me from Merrill Field to Chandler Lake, about 150 miles due north of Fairbanks. And uh, I was <coughs> mining at that time in the Brooks Range, and we flew the house trailer up there and landed on the ice uh, with the big airplane. Uh, but certainly Bob performed a real service for me each spring flying freight uh, into the Brooks Range and for many other miners and uh, isolated bush camps in Alaska. In those early days, Bobby and Maury did everything. Maintenance, loading, flying, selling. And because the idea of flying large items into the bush was new, keeping business coming in the doors meant thinking up new ideas for service. Johnny Miskovich, one of the pioneers of modern mining in Alaska, recalls how important Bobby and Maury were to the miners. Well, so Bobby came in at the opportune time. At that time, we were hauling gasoline and fuel oil in barrels. And this was very essential to keeping us uh, going because without fuel oil, we couldn't run our machinery. And then uh, Bobby also, in addition to uh, uh, servicing uh, for fuel oil and gas, uh, he became involved because the Army had a lot of surplus uh, engines, cats, and other things that they were selling off. Bobby saw the opportunity to invest in this and also help the miner. So as he traveled around with his boxcar, if uh, he felt John Miskovich needed a welder, he'd throw a welder on. And if we needed a truck or maybe some tires or a conveyor belt or whatever it was, he would bring it in. He wouldn't have an order for it, but when he got there, he would sell it. Some people called him the junk dealer, but to us, it was very precious junk. <laughs> Not long after Northern Air Cargo began serving remote mining sites, general contractors saw an advantage in flying equipment into the bush. And with each job, some unique handling problem had to be solved. 
like the time we were called on to fly submarine cable to a mountain construction site. It was a four inch cable, it's what they called a submarine cable, uh, the type of cable they lay on the bottom of the ocean, and of course they were laying it on the side of the mountain for the, it had to withstand the weather. Uh, it was about 1,200 foot to a cable, and uh, it took uh, 12 cables. Of course, we probably could have got it all in one length if we'd have been laying it off a barge in the ocean, but uh, it was cut into uh, uh, six different pieces, and uh, they weighed uh, uh, six tons a piece. And uh, of course, the boxcar, that was, uh, was what it would handle, would be six tons, and so they designed a cradle that would slip into the boxcar. As a matter of fact, there's two cradles. Uh, we had one at sight, and the other one they were, would haul back and get another roll cable. The boxcar uh, moving outsized cargo was really quite a uh, quite a boom to the to the Alaska because it did give you a means that you could move uh, uh, vehicles and light equipment uh, to your site. From the beginning, Bobby knew that service would be the key to success. His philosophy was simple: you do what needs to be done to meet the customer's need. No one knew that better than friend and colleague George Thorson. He met Bobby when they flew together for Ween and remained a close advisor over the years. Today, he is one of the senior members of the board of directors. One thing about him was that if he said he would do something, if he would promise to be at a certain place at a certain time to do something for somebody or bring them a particular piece of freight or something, he'd do it. And that in turn is what caused Northern Air Cargo to grow as it did and be successful it was, was that inherent uh, integrity of Bobby Shulton and his attention to wanting to serve those customers out there, and he did it, and did it very well. Another aspect of the business that Bobby did well was looking into the future. He saw Alaska growing, and new northern air cargo had to keep pace with new demands. He knew ahead of time what's going to happen to the air cargo business in Alaska. He was the one that figured out that the proper airplane was not the DC-3 or these other airplanes like the Boxcar, but the proper airplane, the one that would be best serve the needs would be the DC-6. He went down to Southern California, and I remember I was there on that trip, and there was an airplane that had been used by a TV station in St. Louis. Now he <coughs> looked at the airplane, kicked a few tires, pulled out a checkbook and wrote out a check for $250,000, which was an astounding amount of money in those days. He came down a little later, and there was an airplane, a DC-6 cargo version that had been owned by Howard Hughes, which had very little time on it, maybe something as little as 100 hours. It had been sitting in a hangar in Santa Monica all those years, Howard Hughes not having used it. And again, Bobby looked at it and bought it, and then it started from there. To Bobby, the DC-6 was the future of Northern Air Cargo. It had a large cargo capacity and excellent performance. It could operate over a wide range without refueling and could easily handle the majority of the gravel airstrips that were being built in rural Alaska. By the end of the 1970s, Northern Air Cargo was beginning to change from a small charter operation to a large modern airline, an airline that had found its place. Northern Air Cargo's chairman, Rita Scholten, remembers those challenging years. I think uh, Northern Air Cargo grew right along with the state of Alaska. Uh, there was more development in the 70s, of course, with the pipeline. Uh, we continued serving the villages primarily, and uh, we added DC-6s as the opportunities arose. And deregulation came about in 1978, so it was uh, at that point in time where the charter would ease off and we would get a 401 certificate to fly schedule. And our first schedule operation was uh, December 17, 1982. That day marked a major transition for the company. Just 24 hours before the first scheduled flight, Bobby Scholten died after a long illness. Some companies might have faltered at this point or sold out but not Northern Air Cargo. To Bobby's credit, he had not only created a fine airline, he also assembled a group of talented and loyal people and provided a unique service to residents of Alaska. A service that was recognized in 1983 by the state legislature in a proclamation honoring his pioneering role in Alaskan aviation. Now, behind the capable leadership of Rita Scholten, 
supported by an experienced board of directors, Northern Air Cargo took the steps necessary to keep the company moving forward. One of the most important steps was moving into full scheduled operations. We had to meet competition with the other scheduled airlines. Prior to that time, we'd have two or three customers per charter trip. Uh, by going into a schedule, we could give a better service. They could send 10 pounds or 10,000 pounds on a trip. And it was just uh, opening up more um, opportunity for, the, for Northern Air Cargo and giving a better service. Scheduled operations also made it possible for Northern Air Cargo to qualify as a carrier of United States mail. In Alaska, mail service, especially bypass mail, is critical to rural communities. It is the most cost-effective way they have to bring in food and other items essential for a comfortable life. Handling bypass mail remains one of the major services Northern Air Cargo is able to provide the people of Alaska. The passion for providing excellent service has been Bobby's legacy, and Northern Air Cargo is famous for getting the load delivered time and time again. I think the success of the co company has been the people, and the hard work and the dedication, and never losing sight of what we want to do. We're within Alaska, and we have tried to give a continuous service to everyone. The air cargo industry in Alaska has grown rapidly, almost overnight, and no one knows that better than the employees. One who can describe that growth firsthand is Jerry Vink, Vice President of Operations and Maintenance. Like I say, when I started with the company, there was, it was real easy to remember everybody's name in, in maintenance. There was one. We've got 95 people in maintenance now. The DC-6 is a wonderful airplane. Every, every 150 hours, the aircraft comes in the barn for about three days, the barn being the hangar. And uh, mechanics swarm all over it for about three days, first inspect it, find out what problems there are, and then fix all the problems and send it back out in the line to go fly. When Bobby Schulten and Maury Carlson began flying to the bush, they handled everything, and it was this personal attention that attracted customers. The same is true today. It's a spirit of service carried on by both the Scholten and Carlson families. Maury's son Tommy is now a captain with the company and manager of the Fairbanks base. Jerry Vink is quick to point out that the flight crew is the most visible part of the company. When the aircraft leaves Anchorage or Fairbanks, the flight crew is Northern Air Cargo, and the captain is in command. He's the front man for Northern Air Cargo. He's, he's the salesman, he's the pilot, he's the, the loadmaster, he's everything. He's got to make the weather decisions, he's got to make the runway condition decisions, he's got to make all of those. He takes input wherever he can, but, but the decision is his. Then once you're there, you've got a no, whole new set of challenges, trying to get that aircraft offloaded. Today, a flight crew may spend as much time moving cargo in and out of the aircraft as they do flying, and they do meet some interesting challenges. When they come to work for Northern Air Cargo, pilots and flight engineers know their jobs will never be dull and that they will gain experience they could find nowhere else. Started with uh, roughly four or five pilots, you know, something like that years ago, and now we're up to about 75 pilots. Training requirements are tremendous. Last summer we purchased uh, the only DC-6 simulator in existence and uh, as a training tool, and it's a tremendous training tool. We're gonna, put, we're gonna take each one of the crews and run them through two flights in the simulator as a crew and we're going to have them fly a profile throw emergencies at them give them engine fires give them everything at them see how they see how they react see how they function as crew and we're going to videotape everything critique it afterwards and uh, really get it get on the standardization and the crew coordination although the flight crews fill an important role at northern air cargo they're just one part of the team the idea of providing top flight service is found in all departments, from administration to cargo to maintenance and operations. The person now responsible for making certain the company continues to provide excellent service is President Wilson Hughes. Northern Air Cargo has a unique group of people. Uh, we find that our, our turnover of people is very low, and, and I believe we have a very happy workforce. They happy, they're happy because they feel good about what they're doing and good about the people they're serving. Uh, presently, Northern Air Cargo 
uh, flies with 13 DC-6 aircraft. One of those is a tanker that we use to fly fuel uh, to the various locations. The other 12 are suited for all varieties of cargo and mail. Uh, two of those are swingtail aircraft that'll take uh, odd size, long pieces up to 67 feet. We maintain a schedule five days a week uh, to 22 villages and locations throughout the state as far reaching as Dutch Harbor, uh, Barrow, um, Nome, Kotzebue, up and down the coast, uh, and then have roughly 80 flag stop communities that we'll, we will uh, service uh, as required. In a case of a flag stop, uh, various customers contact us. We list their needs on the computer when the load is built to the size that it is an economical load for the aircraft, then we'll call these various customers and say, uh, next Friday, if you'll have your freight here, it'll be combined with 10 other customers and we'll make a, quote, flag stop into your location. Flag stop, charter flights, scheduled service. Since 1956, Northern Air Cargo has been meeting the air freight needs of Alaska. Over the years, when customer needs changed, Northern Air Cargo found new ways to meet those needs. In fact, they were often a step ahead because Bobby Scholten kept an eye on the future. And it's the same today. Northern Air Cargo has, must continue to look forward uh, to uh, look at ways and methods to continue to provide the service to our customers in the bush. As, as, uh, as time goes along, the, their needs and their demands are, will, uh, will increase, and uh, naturally they will expect even more service. Uh, we're looking for ways to provide that on a more timely and more cost-effective basis. Uh, as we continue forward through the 1990s, we will work hard and dedicate a considerable amount of effort to maintain that position we have as Alaska's first and only all cargo care. Oh, <laughs> my